you're gonna get hacked. You know, there's a thing that we say in cybersecurity across the industry, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, because you will be compromised at some point. Whether some software that you're running is vulnerable, maybe you fell for a phishing link or you clicked on something that you shouldn't have, it just happens. And you can't always rely on prevention or preventative measures to stop it. Hey, antivirus, maybe you just turn that on, set it and forget it, sometimes it misses. So you also need to blend in some detection capabilities and finding and seeing the threats so that you can then respond and do whatever cleanup remediation you have to. So in this video, I'd love to kind of open the door for us to maybe explore soon enough some detection engineering, and the way that we can do that is super easy. So here I am on my computer, and I'm gonna go over to Firefox, open up the web browser, and I just wanna search for the Aurora Light. Here we go, there's the result I'm looking for, Aurora Agent from Nextron Systems. Now, Aurora is an example of an EDR, or an Endpoint Detection and Response Platform. Yep, fine, you can take my cookies, I don't care. The thing is, Aurora is based on Sigma rules. And these are these rules that we've talked about before, or at least will be very, very soon, on how you can detect or look for and hunt for malicious activity and bad things happening on your computer. One of the coolest things is that Aurora is completely transparent and fully customizable because you can change and manipulate the Sigma rules under the hood that it might try to detect or flag things off of. It doesn't really use a whole lot of bandwidth or storage across your network, and it's all on premise. Like you could literally run this on your virtual machine or on your computer or whatever you want and just kind of play. And to be honest, for our purposes of a YouTube videos and maybe a series on education of detection engineering, look, there's a free version with Aurora Light where we can play with any of these Sigma rules and maybe learn some detection engineering. In my mind, that is the best part and that is why I thought, hey, that would be perfect for a little bit of a sandbox, a playground environment for us to learn and get some education in. We can kind of kick the tires, see what Aurora does out of the box, and then maybe try to set up our own Sigma rules, maybe start with a clean slate and try to craft and create some some detection efforts that, hey, we just build out on our own. And let me say, Aurora is put together by Nextron Systems, and you might be familiar with a lot of their other stuff, like Thor, or other maybe open source and freely accessible tooling, all offered by the great folks over at Nextron Systems. And they're kind of champion Florian Roth. I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of his great work over on the internet for cyber threat intelligence and tracking adversaries. Great stuff there. Kudos where credit is due. This is all big thanks to Florian and Nextron Systems. But let me showcase Aurora Light the free community edition that you can just go ahead and download. Grab off the internet here, click on download Aurora Light. The only thing that you need to enter here for the free edition is just a name and email address that they'll send you the download to. Super quick and easy, you'll get a email to confirm. And once you've confirmed, you'll receive another email with the personal license file and the download link for Aurora Light. Here it is, we can click on download your license and download Aurora Light and get these on our computer. I am downloading for Windows. Here they include the SHA-1 hash so you can do a little like integrity check, validate the download here, cruise through the end user license agreement, and with that, we can download. All right, so in my downloads directory, I have this zip archive. I can go ahead and extract all here. Just leave that in, I don't know, maybe our desktop, that's fine. Uh, we'll put it in just an Aurora folder here. And what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this license file and put it in the same directory here. We'll open that folder up and I'll just paste it in, and I think that should be good. I'll close these windows and I'll open up a terminal here, just the command prompt so that I can move into my desktop. I'll CD into desktop and move into the Aurora directory that we've created. We have all of this stuff here, but of course the Aurora agent 64 bit executable that we want to fire off. So let me just dot slash Aurora agent 64 bits. I'll hit enter and okay. Hey, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Sure thing. This will protect my computer and hey, get a little bit more of that detection and response in action. Let's hit yes. And Aurora light is firing up. Takes just a moment to get things loaded. It's going to be cruising through all of those different Sigma rules. And now, hey, Aurora's doing its thing. Look, we can keep kicking the tires in just a second, but I do want to drive the point home. Seriously, you listening in, whether your organization, business company, whatever, I don't know. Look, doing this in one way, in any way, shape or form, hooking up some events that you might be tracking, some information and telemetry that you could get and pour over into a SIEM or a SIEM, the Security Information Event Management thing, getting that seam or sim, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, getting that actually put together and building out this detection capabilities, you could 
probably like pretty likely practically prevent like almost 60 to 70, maybe even higher of the like incidents and breaches that still happen in today's world. It's all a matter of getting folks actually taking a look at the event, you know, like a SOC or a security operations center. And SOC analysts, great folks that are always cruising through that, hey, they need a little bit of love. And seriously, they do great work. If you don't mind, I'd love to tell you about something that our great friends over at Devo are doing to celebrate and appreciate those security operations center analysts and hey, all of us in the industry doing great work to better cybersecurity. SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. Security Operations Center analysts are always in the trenches. They fight on the front lines for cybersecurity defense, and oftentimes it's a thankless job. They are the unsung heroes of our industry. So to help celebrate these champions, Devo is hosting the third annual SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. A completely free event, on October 18th, Devo established the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day to give some long overdue kudos to SOC analysts and encourage organizations to improve job satisfaction and mental well-being. Packed full with career-focused sessions like finding your role in niche, digging into automation, transitioning from public sector to private sector cybersecurity work, and so much more. I'll be speaking on the rapid response efforts during the 3CX supply chain compromise, and I'd love to see you there. If you're a current security operations center analyst, or you're fascinated by the work and you want to become one, you should absolutely tune into the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. It's completely free and a day dedicated to celebrate you and your great efforts. Sign up for the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day on October 18th with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash SOC. Huge thanks to Devo for sponsoring this video. Okay, so Aurora Light is up and running on our computer. And look, let's just kind of play pretend. Let's say that I am an adversary. I'm a threat actor. I'm a hacker. I've compromised this computer and maybe I can just do anything I want. Now I've got control over it with like a reverse shell or command and control, uh, some implant or beacon and say that I was running from the command line, just the usual immediate quick and easy enumeration. Hey, what user am I? Who did I land as with the shell that I want to be interacting with. Who, who am I? Let me run this and you'll note, ooh, okay. Uh, a couple of entries already firing off from Aurora. Now this is small, simple, hey, just in the text here, but wouldn't it be nice if we got a little bit better notification for that or we could dig into it? Yes, exactly. So look, honestly, I'm gonna hit control C and I'm gonna close Aurora and I'm gonna try and run that again, but I want to use some other little command line arguments or other things that we could do here. I think TAC H will show me the help. No. Maybe we could just go ahead and check out the documentation online. Here it is. This is the Aurora agent user manual, and you could kind of dig into all the stuff here to get it spun up, get it installed just as we did. But the Aurora agent dashboard, that seems kind of neat. I do want to be able to dig into that. So we have more of an interface and we can see stuff happening rather than just in that simple command line. Aurora can be started or installed with a dashboard feature using the dash dash dashboard flag. Saying dash three times was kind of weird. Dashboard can be accessed with whatever web browser Browser going to port 17494. And with that, we could change and manipulate some of the notifications or any of the other settings that we might like. So let's try that. Let's try to run our Aurora Agent 64 bit with TAC TAC dashboard. And the moment I fire that up, we should be able to see hey, Aurora's fired up. And ooh, we get a little notification the Windows balloons or the toast that it shows. Hey, Nextron notifier is started. And now we could go navigate in our web browser to the dashboard. That was on what? Local yeah, 17494. Now this is Aurora running in the current context, like the current session of this invoked rendition or runtime of Aurora, right? So we don't see the who am I command that we had just a moment ago, but here we could see all of the flagged rules or the detection events that we saw. And we could, I don't know, dig into the settings, the status. Uh, if you wanted to change any of these configuration values for the notifications, you totally could. Of course, find the documentation and hey, maybe grab the full version if you would like to. But look, let's say I'm more of a sophisticated hacker now. And look, I'm gonna use some of those living off the land techniques or lol bins, living off the land binaries or lol bass with scripts and other libraries. And let's try to use something a little bit more shady or nefarious 
other than who am I, right? We could do, I don't know, some something simple again as a proof of concept, like just fire up in the calculator or the command prompt or some process that we might want to start, but at least we can mask it or, or hide it, let it blend in a little bit by trying to use some other utility to proxy it. I'll use script runner because this is super quick and easy. Uh, and we just go ahead and execute whatever we want underneath script runner. This should be able to get maybe some notifications here for us because we can go see what rule or even what Sigma rule is actually gonna see this. Let's minimize this, get back to a command prompt. And let me just, I don't know, we could paste this in where we run calc.exe. Does this fire for one thing? Yes, it does. And take a look, potentially p suspicious PowerShell child. Ooh, because we got to run scriptrunner.exe out of PowerShell. Let's close out the calculator and let's go view that event over in our dashboard. Let me toggle back over here to the dashboard and take a look. Sigma did find this event fire. We drill down into this. There is a potentially suspicious PowerShell child process because we, hey, fired up something weird. Now, the cool thing is it gives us all of the resources that tell us what fired here and how. We could go dig into this Sigma rule and like where it actually exists inside of our installation of Aurora. Let me copy this path and let's get back to our file explorer because in the desktop on that Aurora directory that we created, we could actually go into maybe taking a look at some of the signatures here. We can go into the Sigma rules and then in this public directory, we know we'll start to fall down the sort of path in the file system that tells us which of these actually are in action. Let me go toggle uh, the location here. I'll just paste in that path for our public so we can drill down into the specific one under Windows, process creation, proc creation, win PowerShell, suspicious child process. Uh, let's remove that file name here, but let's just go see all of the potential Sigma rules that could be ran here. Take a look at all these kind of tagged with lol bins or those living off those land techniques. And this is just like the open source data set. Now let's try and filter that down to just the rule that fired our process creation when PowerShell suspicious child process. Can I go ahead and open that? Let's use sublime text just to see that in a text editor with the YAML syntax highlighting and take a look. This is the Sigma rule that fired potentially suspicious child process. Yep. Hey, we've got a little uh, note here for the description, maybe an ID experimental status, and maybe a reference as to where this was flagged and some miter attack techniques. If you're tracking a lot of the miter attack uh, kind of vernacular and terminology here. So this is the detection logic. We're going to try to select and build the criteria out for the image, the parent image, right? The process ID or the process that ran, whether it's PowerShell.exe, maybe ISE for that integrated scripting environment and whatever process the image flag, the field set for the process name and the command line actually ends with, whether it's bash, bits admin, cert util, or any of these, you can see our script runner executable is in that list. And of course the condition here, hey, we do wanna check in any of the selection criteria and maybe some other optional filters that we're gonna be tracking. The question is though, this lol basking, did we actually see this in action? The one that uh, lolbins recommended, that was suggested with here, is this actually present in our set? I think it is. Let me go ahead and search for this. Let me paste that into the search bar here, but it doesn't exist. What about, I don't know, higher than this? Ooh, shim database is firing off. Something weird's going on. By the way, not to completely derail, but I think that's one of the coolest things you also get a little bit of visibility to. When you're just like using your computer, you can see some of the stuff that just naturally happens on Windows. And then you can get a little bit more of the security research, I don't know, maybe intuition in there and explore different things that just happen. Let me go up to a higher directory. If I just search for this YAML file, no, even in like, I don't know, let's go to the very, very top of Aurora, that doesn't exist. So could we just create this? Like we could copy and paste this and go put this into Aurora's rule set. But look, let's dig into some of this logic here because the selection component is actually checking if the parent process is serve you. Maybe that's a little bit more specific to some specific threat. Like, hey, threat actors targeting SolarWinds software with some exploit chain. Uh, maybe that's not what we just got to fire off but it does look like the actual process could end with script runner. So maybe that isn't exactly what we want here, but we could tweak this. Like we could manipulate this, we could write our own and maybe even build out as many as we want of these like living off the land binaries and small Sigma rules to be able to detect them. 
And if we actually dig more into the documentation of Aurora, then look, maybe we could manipulate or change what rules are actually added or what configuration is set or maybe running Aurora as a service so it's in the background and you don't have that foreground little command prompt there. But if we did want to start to write our own rules for Sigma, we could dig into the Sigma repository, again, totally free, available online on the open internet on GitHub, and we could, hey, go figure out that syntax, maybe kind of baseline off of the other rules that exist and see how we could get started writing our own rules. Now we could just do small, simple stuff, like this is just kind of our own educational, exploratory sandbox and playground, but if we were to try to, hey, play with these rules, could we actually detect our invocation of script runner. If we drill down into the Sigma specification, we might be able to go see, hey, what do we need to actually refer to the arguments that are included in the command line? But I think that is a fine enough cliffhanger because at least now we've kicked the tires on Aurora, got it set up, and now we can start to write our own Sigma rules. But now we've got a real-time environment in a virtual machine that we can just test rapidly in the moment, see, hey, will our activity, will this behavior, will this threat, like a real actor, threat actor, hacker, and adversary, could that be something that we could see in the environment? I'm really excited about different videos, maybe along that idea, like, hey, we could roll through low bins, craft our own canvas of detection engineering rules and rule sets, or maybe, I don't know, start to look through the DFIR report, the DFA report. Maybe we could look through new write-ups or threat intel and analysis shared by tons of vendors out there. Like, we could have a whole lot of fun, and I hope you are enjoying that sort of material and content. A Little bit of blue team, a little bit of defense, a little bit of detection engineering. And with that, hey, kudos for credit is due. Nextron Systems and Aurora and Florian in the mix here. And also, please, if you'd like to support and maybe give some love and support to those SOC analysts, security operations center folks that do this work day in and day out, tracking these alerts and notifications, seeing what detection rules fire, please go take a look at Devo's SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. Link in the video description. And I'm excited to go give a little bit of a presentation there. I hope that'll be fun. So hope you enjoyed this video. A little quick dip in our toes in the water for detection engineering, and we'll do more soon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.